Hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Please subscribe and hit the like button. It does help my channel out quite a bit and I appreciate it so much. Uh, Dutch order China to remove two illegal police stations. The Netherlands moved this week to force illegal service stations operated by the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, out of the country. Safeguard Defenders, a human rights watchdog organization, revealed in September that China has established at least 38 of surveillance stations in dozens of countries around the globe. Dutch Min Minister of Foreign Affairs Wupke Hokestra posted a tweet on Wednesday reporting the Chinese ambassador had been advised that the stations were to be immediately closed down. Hoskistra said China has not asked the Netherlands for permission to set up either of the surveillance offices. The Chinese station were determined to be operating in the Dutch cities of Amsterdam and Rotterdam. Chinese Foreign Ministry uh, spokesman Zihao Lijian, L I J I A N Lijian, or Lijian, told reporters that the two Dutch offices were operated by local volunteers from the Chinese community and were not run by state police. When allegations first surfaced last month that the offices were operating in the Netherlands, Chinese spokesman Wang Wimbim, Wim, Wimben said the offices were merely service centers that are in place to help overseas Chinese nationals in need access uh, the platform to have their driving licenses renewed and receive physical examinations. Hmm. One Chinese descendant, descendant currently living in Rotterdam disagreed with China's claim. Wang Zhangwu said he has solid and clear evidence to prove it's a Chinese overseas police station. Zhang Yu said he has been receiving dozens of phone calls each day from the Rotterdam, Rotterdam station displaying an official phone number. The person calling him has told him to turn himself in and go back to China. He added that he has been threatened with an officially registered telegram text originating from the Rotterdam, Rotterdam office. The report from Safeguard Defender states the CCP's international police operations are part of a state program to bring Chinese nationals who are descendants from the communist regime back to China. Those persons are reportedly brought back under bogus fraud investigations. Chinese state media reported earlier this year that around 230,000 fraud suspects were persuaded to return to China by the CCP's International Station Police between April 21 and July of 22. Safeguard Defenders said that its investigation indicates most of the persons persuaded to go back to China were actually descendants or individuals that had fled re religious and or ethnic persecution. Well, I don't know what to think about that one, but uh, that was April 21 through July 22, so hopefully that's all been taken care of. But uh, it said that uh, they have got these places now. You know, I did a video on the ones in New York. Yes. What, what does Chinese need police stations in the United States? Does that make sense to you? I don't know. Leave me a comment. I read them. I try to answer back if I possibly can. I don't know what to tell you. Strange things. Sometimes I wonder if I, I get the feeling, you know, it's almost like living in a uh, spooky movie <laughs> you know 
<laughs> Jeez, what's going on around here? <laughs> okay, let's go to Wi-Fi. Now, I had another article on it, but for some reason it disappeared. You know me. Oh. But I found another one. Well, I thought I did. Uh, now this one, it says, it may be moved, edited, or deleted. I didn't delete it. See, there I go again. It's It was an article on these people that piggyback your Wi-Fi. It's a very interesting article. It's not the first one, but it's the second one I found. Now, see, it won't let me do it. Look at that. Your file couldn't be accessed. It may have been moved, edited, or deleted. Well, I didn't delete it. I wanted to read it. I wanted to post it. Maybe it could help somebody. Because it could be neighbors or, or anything. I'll find another article. They're not going to stop me. <laughs> no, they won't stop this old woman, honey. No. No. But I'll delete this one. Let it go. I'll get me another one. I'm not worried about it. Uh, let's see. Let's put that up there for now because that's the thing. But, you know, anyone living close to you, neighbor, in back, sideways, front ways, you know, whatever, they can horn in on your Wi-Fi. And the only way that you can tell that is if all of a sudden your Wi-Fi ain't accurate. If it's slowing you down, then you've got a helpful hint. Somebody has got in now they can get your password i mean hackers if they're smart enough and there's a lot of them out there a lot smarter than we ever thought of and they can do it they can get your password they can get all your information they can get anything they want and they really don't have to live that close to you to get all your information they can live in another country and do it you know that so i'm not telling you nothing but um uh, I'll find another article because it was very interesting. Uh, let's go to this one here. But isn't that strange that they took that off my computer? Hmm. I don't know. Now this is tragic. This is so tragic. Um, yes. And you could watch it live. But the death toll revealed in tragic plane crash. And it shows how that plane came out of the sky into this great big ocean. A passenger plane crashed into Lake Victoria. Well, it's called Lake Victoria, but it's huge. In Tanzania on Sunday, killing at least 19 people. Precision Air Flight PW-494 hit the water after attempting to land at the nearby uh, Bukoba, airport during heavy rains. Rescue crews and boats rushed to the site of the crash to rescue the trapped passengers and crew from the nearly submerged wreckage. Tanzanian Prime Minister Kassem Mawalawa Mahalawa I'll just say it like that, Mahalawa. Forgive me if I don't pronounce these names correctly. Spoke to reporters at the lakeside city of Bukoba where he expressed his country's sympathy for the 19 people killed. Uh, Majo Lawa said investigators were looking into what happened. Tanzanian's president, uh, Samaya Suluhu Hassan, posted on Twitter that she had received the news of the crash call and called for calm as rescuers worked to free the passengers she asked also for prayers. The flight left the commercial capital, Dar es Salaam, Sunday morning, and it crashed as it was on approach to Bukoba Airport. It was carrying 39 passengers, including an infant. Along with four crew members, initially Precision Air, Tanzania's largest privately owned airline, said 26 of the 43 people had been rescued. Later it was confirmed only 24 people 
were rescued alive. One witness told a local news outlet that the plane was flying unsteadily as it made its approach to the airport in the storm. The witness said the plane took a turn for the airport but missed, landing in the lake instead. Video footage of both news outlets and onlookers showed local standings along the shoreline while others went into the water to try to pull the aircraft closer to shore using ropes. Both pilots survived the initial crash but were trapped in the cockpit. They were in contact with rescue workers until reporting that their oxygen supply was running out. When rescue workers finally made it to the cockpit, the pilots were dead. The two flight attendants were among the survivors. Precision Air identified the aircraft as the short haul turboprop ATR 42 500 made by Franco Italian manufacturer ATR. So sad. My heart goes out to the to the survivors and the ones that lost their baby. And um, don't know if the mother was one of the survivors or not. I just you just don't know how to take stuff like that. You know you can't think of what would I have done in that situation. What can you do? Now we've got country's largest earthquake leads to six deaths. I'll click on it. I don't know if I'll get much here, but uh, the earthquake that slammed western Naples on Wednesday is responsible for the death of at least six people and the injuries of a number of others, as reported by police. The earthquake struck at approximately 2.12 in the morning. It occurred on Wednesday at 8.27 p.m. Naples time which is 8.27 p.m. UTC. The earthquake's epic center was close to a national park in the sparsely inhabited Dati District, D-O-T-I, Dati District, which is 430 kilometers or 267 miles west of Kathmandu, the capital of Nepal. There's a song out, uh, Kathmandu, or... Kathmandu or something like that years ago. According to the Kathmandu Post, the United States Geological Survey measured the earthquake to have a magnitude of 5.6 and depth of around 15.7 kilometers, 9.8 miles. However, Naples National Seismological Center recorded a magnitude of 6.6. .6. A child of 8 years old, a girl of 13 years old, two females of 14 year olds were killed. Multiple houses fell into the Purica, Aki, rural municipality, according to Bahoa Bahada, the deputy superintendent of police in Date. Woman in her 40s and male in his 50s perished in the incident. According to a story in the Kathmandu, Post, Bahada stated that the incident injured five additional people who were then sent to the hospital. New Delhi, the capital of India, experienced some shaking, but there were no reports of casualties on the Indian side of the border. Sher Bahadu Diuba, the Prime Minister of Nepal, sent out a tweet in which he extended his sympathies to the relatives of the fatalities and stated that he had asked the appropriate agencies to provide urgent assistance to those who were located in the impacted areas. The Army Ground Rescue Team has been sent to the location. Two helicopters are on standby in the neighboring towns of Sirkat and Napo Gujai, according to the spokesperson for the Nepalese, Nepalese Army, Narayan Nera Selawa. S-I-L-W-A-L, Silwal. Naples is still rebuilding after two big earthquakes struck the country in 2015, killing around 9,000 people and destroying entire villages and temples that dated back centuries. The amount of harm done to the economy was $6 billion. Oh my goodness. 
Researchers find a possible link to child's death. I don't know if I can get this one or not. DCDs. The Center of Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, estimated that 3,400 babies in the United States passed away suddenly and unexpectedly each year, mm, pardon me, with unknown causes, accounting for 32% of those deaths. Although sudden unexpected infant deaths, SUID, during the first month of life are uncommon, Rutgers University research shows that the causes and risk factors for these fatalities differ even during the brief period. However, they discovered that sudden infant death syndrome is more likely to be identified as the cause of death for infants who pass away later in the first month of life, SIDS. SID, S-U-I-D, also known as sudden unexplained infant death, is the sudden and unexpected death of a newborn younger, newborn younger than one year old in whom the reason for was not clear till examination, according to the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention. Sudden infant death syndrome, SIDS, is a probable cause of SUID, according to specialists who disagree that SUID and SIDS are the same. According to Jennifer Kurtz, DO, Chief of Neonatal Medicine at Long Island Jewish Forest Hills, a division of Northwell Health in New York, SIDS is likely cause of sudden unexpected baby death, suffocation, strangulation, and unexplained causes in addition to SIDS are probably caused of the SUID, she continued. A summary of sudden unexpected infant deaths by cause for 2020 published by the CDC shows that 41% of newborn deaths are caused by sudden infant death syndrome. Unknown causes were responsible for 32% of the cases. Accidental suffocation, strangulation in beds accounted for 27% of deaths. At 889 newborn deaths designated as SUID and delivered at or above 34 weeks of gestation, 123 occurred during the first 27 days of life in infants at or over 34 weeks gestation, time between conception and birth. Now, I would have to study that a little bit. Yeah. Researchers examined data from 2000 to 2015. Mothers of infants who died in the first week of life had fewer signs of typical risk factors for SUID, according to a study conducted by Dr. Annalisa Kurtz and her co-researchers at New York's Mount Sinai School of Medicine. Boy. I don't know, but that's sad when that happens. It's just like, you know, you just brought your baby home from the hospital. And uh, before you know it, they're gone. My goodness, I'll be back. Later.